unveil the beauty of who Jesus is, that's when our faith gets strong. And that's why that verse from Romans chapter 10 makes so much sense. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the words of Jesus. When you hear the word of the beauty of what Jesus has done, then faith becomes strong in our hearts. That's why unveiling God's love is the highest priority of Shoreline Christian Center because it has everything to do with our ability to love God, everything to do with our ability to love the people around us, everything to do with our ability to have strong faith. What about dreams? Well, I don't have time to get into it in detail, but just think about it like this. If you base your dreams on your own gifts and talents, you know what? Your dreams will always be small and stunted. But if you believe in, in God's great love for you, then your dreams are gonna grow and expand. If you base a dream based on His unmerited favor, on His mercy, on His love, on His goodness, on His faithfulness, on His bigness, if you base your dream on those things, man, you're going to dream so much bigger than you ever would if you based it on your own gifts or talents or what you saw somebody else do or, or what someone else is able to accomplish. Dream a dream based on His love. You unveil the love of God and you're going to be dreaming big dreams. What about living a godly life? Maybe this is one of the most practical ways where unveiling the love of God makes a huge difference in our lives. Because you know what? Most people, when they think about living right or they think about living wisely or living godly lives, they think about it in terms of human effort and human performance. They think, if I could just make good decisions, if I could just, you know, gut it out, if I could just do the right thing, then, uh, you know, then I'll live in a way that's pleasing to the Lord. But in reality, when people sin, it is rarely because they don't love God enough. It's because they just don't know how much God loves them. I heard this story about a, uh, a king who decided to pardon everyone in his kingdom. And there was a prostitute that was living in that kingdom that heard the news that she was pardoned. And, uh, and, and out of the joy that she uh, experienced, knowing that all of her mistakes were washed clean, that she would not be held accountable for any of the wrongdoing that she had, had done in the eyes of the king, that she had been fully pardoned, I mean, she was so filled with joy. Now, that's not where the story ends. The story goes on to the fact that not only was this woman pardoned from all of her sins, but the king himself decided to make the former prostitute his bride, his queen. And, uh, and, and so now she's in the palace sitting next to the king. The great love of the king on display. Not only did the king pardon her of all of her mistakes, but the king loved her enough to make her his bride. Now think about it. That's exactly what God has done for us. He loved us so much that he sent Jesus to die for us on the cross and pardoned all of our iniquities, all of our sins, all of our shortcomings, all of our mistakes, the Bible teaches that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but we are made right with God, not based on the beauty of our performance, but the grace of God uh, displayed on the cross where Jesus laid down his life for us. If you read the Bible further, you'll discover that, that not only did Jesus pardon us from all of our sins, but we are now the bride of Christ, that we're, we're his church and he loves us beyond measure. And so not only did he pardon us, but in effect, he married us. And that's the kind of love that he has for us. Now, you need to ask yourself a question. Will this former prostitute who is now sitting next to the throne, who has been pardoned of all of her sins and is now married to the king and she is indeed the queen of the whole kingdom, is she now going to go back to living the way she used to? Of course not. The beauty of the love that the king had for the woman would motivate her to live a completely different life. And the same is true for all of us. When we understand how much God loves us, we're gonna want to live for Him. We're gonna want to serve Him. We're gonna want to love Him. We're gonna want to make a difference in this world that we live in. All of it based on the love that God has for us. The truth is, if you ever doubt 
that God's love is the supreme attribute of his nature, all you have to do is look at the cross. The cross forever settles the issue. I mean, there's a lot of things about God, uh, wonderful attributes about God. He, we know that God is holy and we know that God is faithful and we know that God never changes. We know that he's all powerful, that he's all knowing, that he's everywhere. There are wonderful, awesome attributes about who God is, but nothing more beautiful and nothing higher than the attribute of his love. The cross forever settles the argument. What is the most important priority in terms of the attributes of God. The cross settles forever the issue. Whenever you doubt, all you have to do is look at the cross and know that beyond all things, God is love. When you think about all of the religions in the world, and there are many of them, there are many of them that offer wise teaching for moral behavior. There are many religions of the world that will inspire people to do acts of kindness and service for others. But there is one thing that Christianity has that you will not find in any other religion, and it's the word grace. Grace, God's love for undeserving people. You could sum up every religion in the world, and in fact, you could sum up the way most kind of good people here in the United States live their lives who maybe don't even have any relationship with God. Most people are guided by the philosophy that if you do good, you're gonna get good. If you do bad, you're gonna get bad. But Christianity is not about do good, get good, do bad, get bad. The foundation of Christianity is we did bad, he did good, and out of his good, we do good. It's completely different from the way the world thinks. Christianity is different because of this one all-encompassing truth, the amazing, awesome, crazy, almost illogical, unconditional love that God has for people. And as we as a church and we as a congregation celebrate and receive and trust in and believe with all of our hearts the amazing love that God has for us, then every significant good thing that God wants to bring about in our lives will come to pass. So that's our vision and that's our heart, unveiling God's love.